Hey folks, welcome back to the channel and to this episode of Tech Club, where we dive into the world of AI and technology to help us be more productive with our time. Now, ChatGPT has been out for a little while now, and with lots of recent updates to ChatGPT, I'm still finding loads of little things that I missed earlier on that now save me loads of time and help me to get more out of ChatGPT and better prompts. I've put together 12 ChatGPT tips that you might have missed so that you can get the most out of ChatGPT yourself. I've even added in three bonus tips at the end of the video, so make sure you stick around for those. If you're not yet a subscriber, please do hit that subscribe button and let's dive into the first ChatGPT tip that you might have missed. Shared links are a new feature that allow you to generate a unique URL for a ChatGPT conversation, which can then be shared with your friends, colleagues, and any collaborators. To share a link, simply head over to your chat history and click on the share icon next to the conversation you want to share. You can then change the title and decide whether you want to share anonymously. You can then share your link anywhere you like and anyone with the link can then see the conversation history and even continue that conversation for for themselves. I've been using this feature when sharing prompts with my team or just wanting to share prompts with my friends more easily. Sharing your ChatGPT conversations is great, but what if you no longer want people to be able to access them? Well, OpenAI have put in a really nice link management system, but it's a little bit hidden away. If you want to manage your shared links and delete them, just head over to the data control section of the settings menu. From here, you can see all of your shared links and you can delete them individually or you can choose to delete them all at once. Did you know that you can customize how ChatGPT looks? It's easy to miss, but if you head over over to the settings area, you can actually switch between light mode and dark mode or have ChatGPT follow your system settings. Now, I tend to use dark mode as I find it easy to see text and the code window, and it's also a little bit less tiring for my eyes if I'm working in ChatGPT for long periods. So definitely try out the method that's best for you. The ChatGPT conversation history tab on the left of the screen is really useful for jumping back into your old prompts, but hardly anyone is getting the most out of it. By default, ChatGPT will assign a basic title for the conversation history, and I find that the history can become quite cluttered quite quickly, making old prompts hard to find. What I'm now routinely doing is I'll edit the name of the conversations I want to keep so that they're as easy to find as possible. I'll then use the trash can icon to delete any conversations I don't want so that I'm left with a core selection of the most useful items that I can then refer back to. If you want to declutter your ChatGPT interface and focus on writing prompts or working within the chat window itself, the chat history can get a little bit annoying. When I'm working in ChatGPT, I'll routinely hit the hide button in the top left to hide that conversation history and stay focused on what I'm doing in the main chat window. If you've been using ChatGPT for a little while like me, you probably have a pretty long conversation history. Now, if you want to get back to basics and build good habits, like naming conversations you want to keep and deleting those you don't, ChatGPT allows you to do a full reset of your conversation history so it's completely clean. To do so, click on your profile in the bottom left of the screen and then click on clear conversations. You'll be asked to confirm and then once you click, everything will completely disappear, going back to zero. You probably haven't used this ChatGPT feature, but it's super useful especially if you want to share or sell any prompts you've created yourself. You can actually export all of your previous conversations in HTML format by heading over to settings and then clicking on export data. You'll then get an email with a link to a zip file of all of your previous prompts and ChatGPT conversations to download. If you open the HTML file, you'll see each conversation which you can then store as a backup or share wherever you like. ChatGPT is free and gives you access to GPT 3.5, which is really good. But is it worth upgrading to ChatGPT Plus? Well, with GPT-4 web browsing and other plugins and improved uptime, my recommendation is that if you know you're going to be using ChatGPT a lot, even just for a month, it's well worth upgrading. I've used loads of paid AI tools like Jasper and others to try them out, and honestly, I keep coming back to ChatGPT as it's just so easy. So if you use it a lot and have $20 to spare, I'd take the leap, and the next few tips are all focused around GPT Plus features. One of the benefits of the $20 a month ChatGPT Plus subscription is getting access to new features before anybody else. To activate beta features like web browsing, browsing and plugins in ChatGPT Plus, head over to settings and go to beta features. Here, you can then toggle on and off any new features and play around with these as you like. The browse plugin for ChatGPT uses Bing search to provide up-to-date references to ChatGPT's training data, which only runs up till 2021. When you switch on the browse plugin and enter a prompt, you'll see that the model at the top has changed to say browsing, and we now get a window that walks through what parts of the web are being crawled. To check where the information is coming from, you can actually expand this window and follow the web crawler in real time. In this case, it's going through Wikipedia and we can see it's clicking on some links and is getting blocked on others. When it's finished its search, ChatGPT will also output sources which can be viewed by hovering over numbers next to the text. ChatGPT plugins are super helpful and I've been using a ton recently to help me search PDFs, find the best hotel deals and even playing chess. And there are loads to search through. Now, if you've been using plugins like me, you might have been a little bit confused by this tiny red shield icon that appears next to some plugins. This icon means 
means that the plugin is unverified, so basically it hasn't passed through OpenAI's plugin review system like this one here next to Prompt Perfect, which is a cool little plugin that helps you with your prompt engineering. You'll see this if a plugin developer pushes an update to the plugin store and is waiting for that update to be verified. As the store matures, verification for updating plugins will likely improve, but don't let that little shield icon put you off trying out some of these great plugins. Developing a plugin for ChatGPT couldn't be any easier. In fact, one of my favorite plugins, Prompt Perfect, was developed by a marketeer with minimal coding skills in just 48 hours using ChatGPT itself. You can feed ChatGPT the plugin docs and then work with ChatGPT to build a manifest file and host it locally. To help you out further, you can head over to the settings and enable developer tools and then add the local path of the plugin that you're building. This will then help you to debug your plugin and get it onto the plugin store as quickly as possible. So why not give it a go? When ChatGPT launched, there were minimal help documents, but did you know that OpenAI quietly pushed their own guide for prompt engineering and best practices for working with GPT? If you head over to platform.openai.com and go to documents, you'll see a guide section towards the bottom of the documentation, which includes this new best practices guide. If you're just starting off your prompt engineering journey, it's a great place to find out ways to get better with prompt outputs and optimize whatever you're feeding ChatGPT. Before there was ChatGPT, there was the OpenAI Playground, and this is now a little bit hidden away from most users who have signed up and jumped straight into ChatGPT. The Playground is a great place to try out some of the different language models, and it gives you more customization features, such as setting the response randomness, and you can even pull an example prompts from the examples drop-down window. If you're interested in training your own language model like I've done with my companies, you can use the Playground to try them out too, and it's super, super powerful, so why not give it a go? Most people completely overlook these two ChatGPT resources, and it's pretty crazy because both can take your prompt engineering skills to the next level. The first resource is the OpenAI community, where you can find a ton of knowledge from other users and OpenAI staff around everything from the latest models to prompt engineering itself. The second is then the OpenAI help desk, which has lots of great articles and most importantly, features the latest ChatGPT release notes and updates as they roll out new features across the world. Now, if you want to find out more about ChatGPT plugins, how to build your own plugin using ChatGPT as your code co-pilot, or anything to do with prompt engineering, I've got some great videos which I'll put up over here that run through GPT-4 specifically and everything that you can do with plugins. Thanks so much for watching and for being a subscriber. Do hit that subscribe button if you enjoyed this video and let me know in the comments below if you have any ChatGPT tips or tricks that you use regularly as I'd love to hear them. Thanks so much and I'll catch you again next time.